ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له هو الاول فليس قبله شيء وهو الاخر فليس بعده شيء وهو الظاهر فليس فوقه شيء وهو الباطن فليس دونه شيء ارسل فينا رسولا كالشمس وضحاها وانزل عليه قرانا وسنه كالقمر اذا تلاها من اهتدى بهديهما وسار في طريقهما سار في ضوء النهار اذا جلاها ومن اعرض عنهما وانتهج نهجا غيرهما سار في ظلمه الليل اذا يغشاها صلوات ربي وسلامه على الرحمة المهداء سيد ولد آدم محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد عباد الله In his book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about a certain type of a self and he gave her the title of اللوامة لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة This entity of yours, yourself If you are of a righteous matter If you are of a conscious that is pious As a believer you always blame yourself and you blame yourself on two levels. You blame yourself if you engaged sins and you rush into repentance. And you blame yourself for failing to act more and to do extra and probably to be busy with something more of a priority than that which you are busy in now. And this is how can we understand what Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said. In al-mu'min, the believer, yara dhunubahu sigar sees his very minor sins kajibalin ala dhahrihi like mountains over his back. And the munafiq, the hypocrite, the disbeliever, yara dhunubahu al-kibar. He sees major types of sins. Kathubabin hatta ala anfihi faqala biyadihi hakadha fatar. Like a fly was on his nose and then he just moved his hand and it flew away like he doesn't bother. It's just a simple matter. What made this believer see simple things that are to other people worthless to even think about it, something of major thing? Because of his genuinity. Because of his pure heart. He is seeing that he's not focusing on the sin itself, how small or big it is. Rather, he is focusing on it is disobeying Allah. Although Allah promised in his book الذين يجتنبون كبائر الإثم والفواحش إلا اللمم when he was describing the believers that he will have mercy on them that he will grant them heaven he described them that they stay away from major sins but they cannot immune themselves from minor sins اللمم and then he mentioned that this is included in the mercy of Allah. Inna rabbaka wasi'u al-maghfira. Allah is all of forgiveness. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because of your purity, because of your genuinity, because of your authenticity and your faith, you always come back and you blame yourself. And you question yourself, how could that happen? What did I do? To deserve this. And subhanallah. As harsh. 
people could be on themselves sometimes as a process of purification they pass through that because the Prophet ﷺ said النَّدَمُ تَوْبَةً The feeling of guilt is a repentance by itself. It is not that you're going to be perfect. But what is expected of you, if it happens to engage sin, major or minor, doesn't matter. The first phase is that, did you feel guilty? Because if you did feel guilty, it means that you're still authentic. There is still faith in you. There is still something that is telling you this is wrong. Because an advanced phase, An advanced phase will be the layer of run. The layer of repeating the sin on and on until you don't see it as sin anymore. You do it and you don't bother and you don't care. But as long as you repent and you come back to Allah fresh and in Islam it is a beautiful phase that does not include humiliation, that does not include degrading anyone and other religions. There are certain rituals to be done. We were told that the people of the book in some sins, when they ask to see God one on one, their repentance was death, to kill themselves. In other religions, if someone wants to repent, he has to go sit in front of someone and expose himself and confess and that could be tough for many people why should I expose my shortcomings to someone who's just like me in Islam it's the feeling of guilt and it's you and Allah and no one in between oh Lord I have committed an act of zulm, major or minor. So forgive me and Allah will forgive you. This self, we need to study why it falls in sins. So hopefully we will learn to protect ourselves not to fall. Um, for sure no one will find a solution that will make him immune. Even in zina, fornication, and adultery, the Prophet said it clearly, Everyone has his portion in zina. He's going to get it. And then he detailed, Some people look, and some people touch, and some people do this. And then he said at the end, Sallallahu Alaihi your, your entity, and we'll talk about this, yourself, wishes for pleasures. And then he said, وَالْفَرْجُ Your private part, يُصَدِّقُ ذَلِكَ أَوْ يُكَذِّبُ It will either verify it that you're going to go far and do the adultery, and commit the major sin or you're going to halt and step back and not fall into haram. We need to understand that the way Allah created us from the beginning, He made us with this ability to engage sins. And this is His wisdom subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And by the self or the soul and the way he made it. He made available in you. Al-fujur wa taqwa. 
you can do both. إنا خلقنا الإنسان من نطفة أمشاج نبتليه فجعلناه سميعا بصيرا إنا هديناه السبيل إما شاكرا وإما كفورا You could walk the path of الشكر and righteousness or you could walk the path of كفر and bad and evil deeds. Understanding that you are made of such entity should make you focus on yourself to try to control these desires that were put on you. And let me mention you something. When Adam was made, the body made from mud, from earth, represented the pleasures and desires. So it is in your mix. It's part of your creation. So when you're going to lean into filling and meeting the needs of your desires and pleasures, it's not going to take much. It's going to go in harmony with your body, with your needs. But righteousness, purity came with the soul. And the soul was breathed into the body. So you need to put effort to upgrade and rise to this level of purity that you need to attain. Very simple reason. MashaAllah, you see people going to the gym every day or every week, two or three times, and they keep, you know, lifting these weights, and you have these big arms, sallallahu alayhi Muhammad, and they keep raising up, you know, 50, 60, 100, whatever, pounds. And they find pleasure in that. They see their muscles, they show off, you know. This same person will have problems lifting his blanket to wake up for Fajr. He can lift 200 pounds, 10 times per second, I don't know what they do. But this same person, tell him, wake up for Fajr, the blanket is like half pound. Stuff. It's not easy. Because going along with your pleasures is part of your desires. But lifting the blanket for, 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 for Fajr is an act of righteous deeds. It takes real men. MashaAllah, he'll be standing behind a cashier for 14 hours a day. And he will sweat and he will move and he will tolerate every single back pain. Because at the end of the day, there's $100 coming into his pocket. $200, $300. But this same person, if the sheikh read more than one page in taraweeh, la hawla wa la quwata illa Come on, man. Go ruku'ah. Finish. Allah. Because making money feeds into your pleasures and desires. But making hasanat, it takes real men to stand still. The pleasure of that which is of mud, desires and pleasures, will fade and will be wasted. But the beauty of things that are earned by acts of worship, there's a different taste to them that is not comparable to anything out, plus its taste. Now these pleasures and desires on the left hand could be also against you. It might stay if it wasn't haram, documented against you. It is very important to understand yourself so you can watch out how to deal with this thing. Your ability to make choices should give you the hint that you need to watch out. That's number one. Number two, the best way to understand how to deal with yourself toward protecting it from falling into sins is to 
work on bringing great in your heart the sense of liability and responsibility. I mean, if you are stopped by a cop, if you were stopped by your wife, I don't want to say a cop. Zillion things will run into your mind. Man, what does she want now? And you start thinking, what did I do? What complaint she's going to bring to Or the wife, if she's stopped by her husband. If you are just reporting to a family member, to someone with little bit power, you try to avoid anything that will make you vulnerable. Because you don't like to be in these tight moments. What about thinking about really reporting to Allah? الَّذِي يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى The one who knows secrets and that which is beyond secrets. One person came, it was said to Zainul Abidin, the son of Ali, the son of al Hussein, the son of Ali رضي الله عنهم أجمعين. And he said, I am committing too many sins. Give me some sort of a reminder to help me quit my sins. He said, if you want to sin, just do it in a place where God doesn't see you. I mean, you'll be stupid to do it in a place where God sees you. So the person said, where can I go in a place that God doesn't see me? He said, wouldn't you feel shameful that you would hide from everyone else. You would care about anyone else, but you would not care about Allah. When we lock doors on ourselves, engaging haram, we have made some sort of preparation for everyone else not to seize us, and we forgot about him. He said, give me another one. This is too tough. He said, if you want to sin, don't practice sins, don't engage sins on a place that belongs to God. Go somewhere else. Yani be respectful to him. He said, where can I go in a place where it is not for Allah? Give me another one. He said, when you want to engage sins, make sure that you have a plan to run away from death. Because death means you're going to report. He said, you're making it more tougher. Give me another one. He said, if the angels of God comes to take you into hell, box them, fight them, you know. Manage to protect yourself. Of course, he got the message. He got the lesson. We need to think more about liability and responsibility and standing in front of Allah. Umar radiallahu an Umar. It was narrated that he would sit down and he will say, "Mada sataqulu li Rabbika ghadan ya Umar." What is that you would say for your Lord tomorrow, O Umar? He would be conscious of himself that he will stand in front of Allah and he will report. And when the Prophet ﷺ told us about four things, لَن تَزُولَ قَدَمَ عَبْدٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ When people stand for God at the day of judgment, you will not move one inch until you are asked about four things. عَنْ عُمْرِهِ All your life فِيمَا أَبْلَاه How did you spend it? أَبْلَاه like used it a lot until it becomes fading. But then specifically وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ عَنْ عُمْرِهِ فِيمَا أَفْنَاهَ I'm sorry وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِيمَا أَبْلَاه Your whole life is one question but then your youth meaning when you are able to engage sins in a powerful way, like not under the age of puberty, not that when you are pretty old age. That's all youth. And then, 
عن علمه ماذا عمل به this knowledge of لا إله إلا الله what did you do about it وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه how did you earn it and how did you spend it أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه أي فوز المستغفرين الحمد لله حق حمده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي من بعده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسول. few fast points because of the time. make sure that you are away of the whispers of shaitan. he brings doubts to your mind. and the way to defeat that is by learning your deen. Be aware of yourself, which is always leaning toward desires, and defeat that by acts of worship. Whispers of shaitan, knowledge. Desires and pleasures, ibadat, acts of worship. Number five, do not become like these people, if they were of other religions or some of the Muslims, they only want to talk about Allah as al ghafur rahim As if it is not in his names that he is Al-Muntaqim, that he is Al-Jabbar, that he is the one who brings people to Hisab. Yes, Allah is al ghafur rahim as he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nabbi ibadi anni ana al ghafur rahim Tell my servant that I am the All-Forgiving, All-Merciful. وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمُ But at the same time, my punishment is the severe one. So do not build all your hopes on just Allah is merciful, Allah is merciful. Yes, He is. But He can also inflict punishment on those who deserve it. So do not assume things and then take it for granted and then give yourself a green light to engage all types of sins. People fall into that. And they say, Khalas, at the day of judgment, Jesus will be for us and will give us a pass. And some Muslims now are saying, the Shafa of the Prophet will take care of us. That's it. We'll go. It doesn't work like that. The Shafa will reach people, yes, by the will of Allah. But you have to deserve the Shafa. You have to have something. It doesn't come just like that. You have to be worthy. And that's earned by good deeds. Number six, protect yourself from ash-shubuhat. The things that are, as the Prophet said, إِنَّ الْحَلَالَ بَيِّنْ وَإِنَّ الْحَرَامَ بَيِّنْ Halal and haram are clear. وَبَيْنَهُمَا In between them, أُمُورٌ مُشْتَبِهَات لَا يَعْلَمُهُنَّ كَثِيرٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ This is why we have in Islam something was declared haram saddan للذريعة. When we say saddan للذريعة, as a preventive measures for you. When Islam said, do not drink liquor as the major sin, but it came with it that, do not squeeze fruits to make it wine. Do not sell wine. When Islam said, do not commit adultery, he said, do not be alone with women. So these things are declared haram. Saddan li dhari'at is zina. Saddan li dhari'at, like, so it will protect you from falling into major sins. It is still haram. It might be lamam. It might be minor sins. But if you are cautious in these minor level of sins, then you most likely are going to be more sensitive to these major sins. Make sure also that you protect yourself from the bad habits of whatever bad evil deeds. You bring it into your system by hanging out with the wrong people. People usually like to imitate others, friends, and this is one of the major sins. Most of these young men, women, who fall into some sort of haram, it is just because they want to be like everyone else. Well, it's okay to be like everyone else if it was a righteous value, but not if it was in contradiction to that which Islam is, tell, is telling you to be cautious of. Let me finish 
by remembering that sins are sometimes a reason to delay blessings to come unto us. And if the Ummah now is facing challenges around the world and the latest news, if it was from Shibh Jazirat al Qarm, south of Ukraine, or if it was in Burma, or if it was now in China, the Chinese government is moving on the Muslim Uyghur Muslims and putting them in jail. If it was in Syria, if it was in Egypt, if it was in Tunisia, if it was in Afghanistan or Kashmir, there are means we need to be prepared and part of this means is to purify ourselves. We all know the story about when Sahaba were engaging a battle and they were not winning. They said, let us look different way. Are we missing any of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? So they said, we are missing the sunnah of brushing the teeth. They forgot about it. So they went to the trees and they started brushing their teeth. The enemy saw these people brushing their teeth. Allah put tru'ab, khawf in their heart. They said they're going to you know, come on and attack us, eat us or something like that. So they were defeated mentally through an act of sunnah. Look how many farad now we are missing in our life. At the same time, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift these hardships on our brothers and sisters. On people in Syria, those who have been forced outside their countries to come back safe. For those who are in prison to be released. For the tyrants to fall down. For people who died to be accepted as martyrs, inshallah. A'lamu anna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك وإنه لا يذل من وليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت ولك الحمد على ما قضيت نستغفرك اللهم من جميع الذنوب والخطايا ونتوب إليك اللهم ارحم موت المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضى المسلمين اللهم اقض الدين عن المدينين اللهم انصر عبادك المجاهدين اللهم فك أسر إخواننا المسجونين اللهم ارفع الهم والبلاء عن أهلنا في فلسطين وعن أهلنا في سوريا وفي سائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم إن دعوناك فاستجب دعانا واختم بالصالحات الباقيات أعمالنا وتوفنا وأنت راض عنا ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ربنا ارحمهما كما ربيانا صغارا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قوموا إلى صلاتكم وأقم الصلاة